Hello and welcome to this DC Velocity webcast. Today, we look at small data, big impact. Today's webcast is, is presented by Yale's Materials Handling Corporation. My name is Dave Maloney. I'm a chief editor at DC Velocity. Just a few notes as we begin. If you're having any trouble seeing the full viewing portion of the slides, there is a control on the top of your webcast viewer that you can use to adjust the size to best fit your computer screen. Also, we'll be taking your questions during today's webcast. So if you'd like to ask a question of our presenter, just type it into the box on your interface and hit the button to submit it. And we'll take as many of those questions as time will permit at the end of today's presentation. Also, our webcast is being recorded, so be available shortly for you or a colleague to view again at dcvtv.com. You'll also get a promotional email to let you know that that is available on demand. Joining us today for our presentation is Stephen Lefevers. Stephen is the manager, Telematic Solutions at Yale. He's responsible for all aspects of product development, sales, and support of Yale's advancing telematic solutions. Stephen has over 15 years experience in the materials handling industry, and he holds a bachelor's degree in, com in computer science and a master's in business administration from East Carolina University. Welcome, Stephen. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Making use of telematics is really an important topic for lift truck operators, and there's so much uh, data that's available to them today. Uh, I know today in your presentation, you're going to explain how telematics helps to manage all that data that your lift truck really wants to share with you. So tell us about it, Stephen. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> uh, we uh, issued an article, a, a white paper, that discussed uh, the concept of small data. Uh, there are more and more articles um, and a lot of hype out there to discuss uh, big data, but big data is just that data. And so what we're going to talk about today is using telemetry to really get insight on uh, actionable things, things that drive uh, improvements in, thing, in profitability, productivity, and safety. We're also then going to mention three case studies where this has happened, where customers have used not just mounds and mounds of data, but actionable insight to drive improvement, and how you can take advantage of, advantages of those same sort of systems. We're going to leave you with some, some thoughts for the future, given the, fact that, given the fact that we're more and more driven to use data in our everyday decision making. And then, as David mentioned, we're going to have time for questions and answers. Thank you, everybody that's in attendance. So first, let's talk about this concept of big data. Um, he, David mentioned that I have 15 years of experience in the tour handling industry. A large portion of that is in fleet management. And our focus at Yale is to, is to really help you optimize your fleet. And in the past, fleet management was really driven by extensive detail analytics. Um, so the concept of big data suits that, right? So it makes sense that the more data, the more, the more you're able to analyze it and drive solutions. But what we're focusing on with our telematic solution, Yale Vision, is not just to have the analytics, but to drive these savings through immediate um, actionable insight, right? So showing you exactly what the issue is or what you can do to make a difference. You know, it's, it's, it's funny that several companies proclaim the glory of big data but fail to organize this information in a consumable way so that can be action, so that action can drive an impact to your business. So let's just break down telematics for a minute. So telematics refers to the use of wireless devices and black box technologies to transmit data in the real time. So telemetry is actually the communication platform. But what it really means is that you've got some device that's put on whether it's a forklift truck or any other piece of equipment that's making a smart connected uh, unit, a smart connected device. And what's out there in the industry in these topics and forums and, and memos and articles is that these, these smart connected devices are making up what they're talking about of the Internet of Things. just means there's more and more pieces of equipment recording more and more information, which can be daunting. I mean, you're looking at more and more detail. Um, and you're asked to make decisions, and you're asked to drive return and value through that data. So what we wanted to do is stop and say, okay, collecting that data is important, but how do we make it useful? So, you know, it's funny. We've got a lot of hype in the industry about big data. They're celebrating it. But the use of big data, people are starting to recognize now is a bit daunting. You've got all these different systems communicating, and it's just creating repositories of data. I think what's special is if you've got an intelligent platform that makes use of it and doesn't require a lot of your time. It's a proactive system. So 
in our situation, we've got uh, Yell Vision on forklift trucks and other pieces of equipment, transmits the data, many times cellular, using cellular communication, and it's creating all this detail. Who's logging in? What are they lifting? What are they using? Are they, are they causing impacts? What are they doing? It's creating all this detail. But the intelligence of the system is what we're doing with it. You know? The intelligence of the system is, is what are we doing to drive action with that detail. Um, the intelligence of the system is based on not, not based on how much data it collects, but how much of that data is driving action. And the examples we're going to talk about today are those specific examples of where we've made sense of big data. We've created small data that you can see and do something with. So let's talk. We're going to go through three case studies today. Um, improved labor management, uh, decreased damage risk, and increased uptime. Uh, it's interesting that when you think telemetry and you're putting it on a device, you would think the first thing we would look at would be the hours of the forklift truck or uh, what are they lifting and what are they moving and uh, how is it being serviced, what are the PMs, but our main focus is labor. So labor cost for operators is a large portion of cost. Um, so we need to focus on labor management because it's of great value to focus on it, but it's frequently missed. Stephen, what you mentioned it's a large portion of cost. What percentage of cost is labor management? It's a majority of the cost. You know, it's 80%. It's a large portion of the cost. It's dependent on the type of truck or the equipment you have, but it's a large portion of the cost. So let's talk about this example. We had a lumber application where uh, the customer purchased telemetry because he had two operators that he knew were the best. And he wanted to measure the rest of his operators to to raise them all up to that bar. So he implemented our, our, our product on his, on, his, on his units, and after 30 days recognized that his two best operators had nearly 50 minutes of idle time. So the bar itself was too low. Stephen, have you seen where they're using the data as a positive influence, such as an incentive program, rather than just holding a driver accountable for what they're doing and sort of criticizing or critiquing their work, but using it in a positive way instead? Yeah, I, I believe that uh, there, there are many customers out there that are using this uh, more of an incentive and less as a consequence. Um, you know, when people think telemetry, they think this black box monitoring kind of big brother technology is just out there to kind of see what's happening wrong. But we've seen a lot of rewards put in place, um, a lot of incentives based on how many users can uh, achieve a certain level of productivity, a certain level of safety. Um, and so I think we're going to find more and more to really get – some, you know, a full use of the system and get everybody behind it. It can't just be a consequence. Thank you for that question. Thanks for answering. So as we look at what to take away from this, so your telemetry provider can greatly help with workforce productivity, but that's often missed. I mean, that's often a piece that's kind of not looked at initially. And I would demand uh, that your telematics provider can interface with your labor management systems or warehouse management systems. We've done a lot, we put a lot of investments um, into that system to make it uh, so that we can interface with those systems. And finally, the actions should be driven by alerts so the system itself is proactive versus forcing somebody to log in and see a dashboard or reports. Um, I don't really get excited about dashboards and reports. While they're great to demo, what really drives action is something that's more proactive because everybody's busy. Everybody has a lot of things on their plate. And so to ask them to log into a portal every day, every week is not feasible. Next, we want to take, talk a little bit about decreased damage risk. You know, impact is kind of a, a cornerstone of many telemetry programs. There have been impact detectors for about a decade now, if not more. Um, you know, avoidable damage, whether abuse or neglect, can really impact an organization. We're going to talk to you about an example. <clears throat> Uh, many times, abuse is a consistent driver of repair costs, but it goes unaddressed. Um, we had a warehouse customer uh, near us here in North Carolina that was experiencing extensive product damage as well as unit damage. Uh, the customer wanted the device to really understand which department or operators were, were responsible. This customer states that once telematics were installed on just the first few units, he saw a bit of a cultural shift in his facilities. The reason he saw a cultural shift is because the first time they got an alert, they acted on it. They didn't get in a, in a presentation room and do graphs of the different impact counts. The first impact alert they got, they went 
they, 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 they did an accident report on it, and they acted on it. And after just – even though the, the telemetry device was only on a few units, they started to see a culture shift. The customer stated that the, the first alert, the, the, that first alert is now driving abuse to a tenth of what it was. Um, you know, it, it seems that the system does not change a person, but the awareness of the system can change a culture. Stephen, have you heard back from other customers who use telematics, and have they had similar experiences in reducing their own damages? They have. Um, you know, what, I think if you have part-time focus on those alerts and you only respond to a portion of them, you're going to have part-time results. Um, but those that are really focused on it and had an issue to begin with are seeing material decreases. You know, 20%, 30%, 40%. We've got customers that tell those stories. So what are the takeaways? So if you've got impact issues in your facility, ask, does your, does your telematics provider have a low-cost monitoring option? We have a very low-cost and um, it can be installed on existing equipment or installed from the factory on new equipment, and it's there to focus on things like impact and idle time and fault codes, and it's an initial low-cost monitoring option just to see what's going on. Uh, ask if your provider separates vertical impacts like potholes from horizontal impacts. Um, we have a three-dimensional impact detection, so we understand if it's a pothole, if it's a dock plate, if it's an uneven floor, versus is it a side collision? If you have an, a competitive telematic product that's not Yale Vision, and you walk up to an operator and you say, I noticed you had five impacts over the past whatever time period, and they say, well, three of them were potholes, and you can't defend it, it weakens the approach. Um, so it's good to separate that. So <clears throat> I think – so now what we want to do is we want to talk about increased uptime or decreased downtime, either way you want to see it. So let me ask you a question. How can telematics lead to improve uptime? Can it uh, – does it improve uptime by appropriately scheduling PMs? Is it immediately notifying your service provider of issues, or is it predictive diagnostics from diagnostic codes? I mean, the answer is it, it's all three of them. What's interesting is only about 50% of the telematics market can actually offer predictive diagnostics. And many times the OEM solution with, predict, with predictive diagnostics is less expensive. Stephen, uh, can the alerts that the telematics sends out, can, can they also be sent to your customer, in other words, the lift truck user, as well as the service provider? And if so, what are the benefits for them also receiving those alerts? Yes, they can be sent to the customer. That's a good question. If one of your first focuses is to reduce downtime, um, we suggest that you set up those alerts to not only go to your service provider but go to yourself. Uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, fault codes shouldn't happen all the time, so you want to know that that part of your system is working, right? That you're seeing that value and you can make some sense of it. Number two, you can actually um, understand how fast your service provider is acting on that detail. If you get a fault code at 2 p.m. and the, the dealer calls you at 2.15, you can see those things tie together and you're getting the return. Now, after 30 days or so and you've seen that work, I'd cut it off, but for the initial 30 days, I would definitely look at it. Thank you. So let's look at this. Let's look at this case study. So we had a uh, customer with t 12 large trucks, and they said that they could not experience downtime greater than 48 hours at any given time. You know, this person, this this customer demanded service level agreements, but was always unhappy with service because it doesn't matter how fast they called the service provider, the service provider would show up and say, "What seems to be the problem?" So we installed telematics on this. On the, on the 12 trucks, and they immediately uh, could tell a difference. Several times, uh, the dealer was proactively calling him, saying, I think there's this problem. Can I go look at it? There's a benefit to not only downtime there but to travel cost. Now, in this situation, when he didn't have trucks to spare and that truck was down more than 48 hours, not only was there an impact to his operation, but he had an increased rental cost. So when he was able to see that he had a service provider that was getting that detail and driving action through those alerts, again, using that small data to make a big impact versus these, you know, having to run reports and find it, if he was seeing that value, um, he not only had a positive impact on his operation but reduced his cost. So what can we take away? Demand that your telematics 
system has diagnostic troubleshooting codes? Are you getting all that value from that internal computer? Um, I know at Yale we've done a lot to advance our system, our onboard systems on our, on our, on our forklift trucks, and you want to get all that detail in so that you can make sure that you're getting that value. Make sure you, that your service provider has the tool to make sense of the fault codes and responds proactively. I'd also, again, if this is one of the first focuses with a telemetry tool, I'd establish and measure uh, the travel and diagnostic time reductions over time. So set a baseline now. Um, you know, many, many times we say, listen, if we can avoid one travel trip, one time a year for the life of the truck, we can pay for a system. So measure it. Again, this is only one piece of the value of, of, of our telematic system, but it, it drives a lot of value. So as we kind of take away <laughs> those three stories, I think, uh, I think it's obvious a couple of things. I think that we, ha we live in a data-driven future, and I would not be overly impressed with the amount of data stored, the amount of reports stored. I'd be more impressed with the solution that gives you actionable details that you can act on. We talked about telling you what operators were idle time. We talked to you about noticing the impacts. We talked to you about using that data for service providers to act, right? So it's a part of it. Um, it there, what, even though big data is what's talked about, small data should be the pieces that's, that's impressive. So tel telematics is becoming more and more affordable. Um, and it's a part of an OEM solution. You know, it's a part of our solution here at Yale. A cellular option <laughs> is preferred because it excludes IT involvement. We have a no-hassle installed solution that's cellular. That means we don't, have to, we don't have to talk about what Wi-Fi security rules there are, and we don't have to do risk assessments about um, these units being in your network. They use cellular. They uh, send data to a cloud that's separately. I don't have to involve IT. So we take out that layer of cost and confusion. Look at this, the cost of this unit being embedded in part of the lease or the full maintenance cost of the unit. There is an, an ongoing fee with, with telemetry. You've got that software cost. You've got that, that monitoring cost or the cellular cost. So embed it so you, so you don't have to pay small fees um, and process smaller invoices. Have it all be a part of one solution. Um, and, and establish success criteria to deliver a specific return. This is the most often missed. Yell Vision, we have 31 alerts that can go to you. We tell customers, please don't pick anything but the first, but two or three. We want it to, when you get an alert from our system, that that requires action, that you see something and it notices you. You can always log into our portal and look at the macro state of your environment, the macro state of your units. Um, but if you're really talking about making uh, a big impact, <laughs> uh, it's all about making sure that that alert drives action. If, if, if everything is special and you're getting all these alerts, then really nothing is. Finally, Yale Vision, we believe, is a premier telematics product. It integrating the intelligence of the forklift with the state-of-art telemetry system to drive improvements in profitability, productivity, and safety. Thank you, Dave, for some of this time to share with you today. Thank you, Stephen, for a very good uh, session. Uh, some good stuff there. Uh, it's obvious that your lift trucks want to tell you things. And I guess the question is, are you able to listen to what they're saying? And uh, if you have a system like Yellow Vision, you can get that information from them. It's time to open up the floor now to our question and answer session. And we encourage you to, to send in your questions. Again, there's time to do that right now. A couple of questions are rolling in uh, to get things started. Stephen, I'd like to ask you, given the accelerating trend in the industry toward introducing automation, such as through the use of AGVs, as their automatic guided vehicles, driverless fork trucks, that sort of thing. You talked a lot about da uh, data specifically tied to an operator's behavior. So if, if we're doing a lot more with automation, could these insights also lead to the conclusion that for certain applications, an AGV is more effective than an operator controlled truck? Yeah, I, I think this will give you that data you need to make those decisions. Um, I think it gives you the full viewpoint of it. I think if you look at an operation, just by looking at it or witnessing it or doing a site survey of a, of a new application or an existing, it's tough to make that decision. Um, getting this insight of how long they're waiting at lines, how long they're, they're, they're idle or lifting or working or moving gives you, gives you 
gives you that look into is automation something we need to be looking at. Good, thank you. We have a question about the cellular uh, uh, the cellular option. Can you describe how that works a little bit? What kind of cellular network you use? How how that would be a part of it? Yeah, that's a great question. So the good news is you don't have to go out and get a pin or get a setup or go and sign a contract with AT&T. We do all that. We try to look at your environment and determine whether or not we want to use GSM, which would be the AT&T and T-Mobile carriers, or whether or not we want to use CDMA, which would be the Verizon and U.S. Cellular and Spent carriers. But the good news is, is that we have those solutions to meet those needs. Um, what we found that's interesting is we've, we've had several customers that have called us and said, there's no way cellular will work. I've got too much metal in my ceiling. So it's important to know that we cache data for up to 27 days. So even if you've got one little dark area of your building, all they have to do is drive outside of it. We're all the time pinging to try to send that data. And so those customers find that they're connecting six, seven, eight, nine, tens a day, ten times a day. So it, it doesn't cause an issue. And they like the flexibility and the ease of having a, just a cellular solution that they don't have to manage. Very good. Thank you. Um, what's the approximate additional cost to a lift truck with an OEM telemet uh, telemetry system installed on it? That's a, that's a great question, and I would definitely go to your corresponding yield dealer to get your, get your price as a customer. But what's uh, good to know is that at the you know, a $700 price point, you can get started with a monitoring solution. Approximately $700. It's going to be different for different environments, how much on-site training you want, how much project management you necessarily need. But around the $700 price point, you've got something that gives you, touches on every piece of uh, those small data uh, case studies I mentioned. Um, and that's just uh, extraordinary if you consider some of the prices of the other products on the market. Um, and so we're, we're, we're suggesting that our sales guys at least suggest it as an option that you can get started. Now, we have three different levels of solution. Um, and so we've got the first solution at that $700 price point. But then we have bolt-on solutions that add additional value that you can add initially or after the fact. But a lot of people, when they hear that those three pieces that we talked about, so idle time, impacts, and fault codes, are with a monitoring solution that can be installed at the factory for around a $700 price point, they really start to get considerate of the solution itself. Very good. As a follow-up to that, Mark is asking a question about whether or not uh, telematics equipment will be actually installed in lift trucks in the future, if you think that's something that Yale and others will do. Yeah, so, yeah, that's an interesting question. So, um, I, I, I think we're going down that way. I know the market's increasing, you know, so uh, we get the question a lot, why don't you just bake it into it? Well, we're in a bit of a price-sensitive price market, and the telematic device itself is, is not $5 or $50. It's, as I mentioned, the, the first level is $700. And so um, I can see in the future there are going to be certain trucks that just have it baked in, kind of the, the Sirius or the XM or the OnStar mentality. Um, I definitely see that going. But when you looked at uh, units less than $25,000, I think in those different applications that cost is significant. Um, and so uh, I, I don't know that it'll ever be 100%, but it'll get there. It's getting, I mean, it's getting, it's, it's advanced a lot in the last three years. So um, we're going to see a lot more. But as far as 100% of, you know, adoption of telematics on every unit, uh, I'd say just get higher, but never 100%. Yeah. Could be wrong. I, I think your analogy with uh, with an automobile is probably on on track there. Um, being that you know you have so many more computer systems in cars, and of course the the fancier the car, the big the bigger the car, the 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 uh, the functional the car is, the more of those kinds of systems you have, and that probably right, will, exactly. will be the same thing with with lift trucks. Mm -hmm. um, another question: you, you said your telematic system integrates with uh, labor management systems and warehouse management systems. Is that only specific uh, LMS and WMS systems, or are you sort of system agnostic in that regard? Can can you tap into any LMS and any WMS. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know that we have 10 different integration points, which touches nearly like 98% of the data in our system. We have it to where you can send data into our system, and our data can send to your systems as well. So it's a, we, we take a holistic approach. We, we built an open model to where nearly every system that's of a recent generation of system can integrate with it. Um, we use uh, just basic web, web YTS and XML in a secure environment to get that data into your labor management system. We haven't run across a situation where we've been unable 
to integrate with a recent generation system. Of course, the system that's 15 years old is going to be difficult to integrate with. But if you've got a system that's of a recent generation, we can integrate. Okay. Um, quick question. Does uh, Who actually owns the data that's collected? Will Yale own that, or does that belong to the customer, or how is that uh, taken care of, and where is it stored, and for how long? That's a great question. And those are several questions in one, so I'm going to try to cut. I'm going to try to catch on every one of them. Make sure, David, that I get to them. So first of all, who owns the data? The customer owns the data. As long as you have active units with us, um, they're activated. That we have a, a, the, the right to use that data to assist you. Um, but it's your data. Um, we don't have any plans to purge that data. Um, when you sign up with us, you sign an agreement that maintains your ownership of that detail. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, hold on. Let me let me ask. So okay. I think I covered each one of them. So right. who owns it? The customer does. Um, where is it stored? It's stored in servers in the U.S. And uh, uh, how long are we going to keep it? We have no plans to purge the data. I, I, I don't. I think it would be more costly for me to have to put it on some device and send it to the customers than it would be for me to just maintain it. Okay. That might change, but we have no plans right now to purge it. Very good. Um, before someone commits to a purchasing a telemetry system, how do they know whether it will, what what benefits they're going to get from it? For example, you know, you you shared three case examples. How would a typical engagement start? Is there an on-site assessment first to to see what kind of data is available, and you know, know what kind of benefit they're going to get? And if so, is there really a cost for that assessment, or what's the process? Yeah, great question. So. Um, the project of telemetry can be a bit daunting because you've got operators you've got to train. Oftentimes you have some sort of swipe card involved. You've got checklists. So we've, we've kind of uh, simplified it into a nine-step process, starting from discovery all the way to 30 days after implementation when we kind of do a closed meeting. So what would happen is we would walk you through that nine-step of implementation, all the way from defining what your goals are and how to, how to tie that to a dollar amount return on investment for you, the customer. Um, then we'd walk through getting getting the, all the settings that we won't set up. What type of alerts do you want set up? Who is going to use it? Um, we'd get the, the, the things on order. We'd get your the users trained, the administrators set up, um, and we'd get to the point where the units are live. And then after 30 days, we'd sit down with you and we'd, we'd revisit, okay, here's where your goals, this is what our actual results are, are, are we making a difference? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Phil has a question. He's wanting to know if they have a mix of Yale and other OEM lift trucks in his operation. Can he also get fault codes from any of the other OEM trucks, the, the non-Yale vehicles? Yeah, so that's a, that's a question. So right now, um, you can only get the fault codes on the Yale, on the Yale unit. So um, it makes sense to have a full a holistic OEM solution. So you're, we're hoping that you're looking at the Yale brand overall. Right, but that is the only disconnect with putting this on other competitive equipment. So let's say you have uh, 10, 10 units in your site and eight are Yale or two or two or something else. Um, every other piece of value would be available to that those other two units except for fault codes. And then what we're hopeful over time is not only are you impressed with the product, but you're impressed with the ability for that proactive service through fault codes that you're able to make a difference. Okay, great. Can you put this system on uh, automatic guided vehicles as well as uh, operator vehicles? Yeah, you know what? We uh, I, I, we haven't done that yet, um, just to be honest. I, I think that's something that as more and more uh, people look to that, that we want to meet that need. But as of right now, we don't have a, a current case of doing that. Okay. Um, Someone is also asking, is it heavy duty? In other words, is it going to be able to hold up over time, the, the, the system and, and the, the, the operational aspects of it? It is. So a couple things. First of all, our brains of our box is hidden where the operator can't touch it. It's very durable. When you look at it, it's, it's got epoxy filling. It can be completely submerged underwater. Our, our operator interface, the operator interface is with is actually a touch screen. Um, it's very, uh, when you touch it, it's as sensitive as an iPhone, but it's very hard. It feels like glass. Many other, other providers actually provide push buttons and rubber buttons that will wear off over time. Um, so we, we wanted to make sure something that's a bit new age, so we like the touchscreen mentality. And we wanted to build where most of the brains were protected to where nobody could damage it. All right. Sounds good. Um, would the telematics that you get actually give you a view of all the asset movements? 
In other words, um, would the person be able to identify a more efficient route, both indoors and outdoors for, um, for their materials movement? That's a great question. So at, at the ProMat show, we uh, started to release our GPS feature. Um, the GPS feature will be released later in uh, 2015, but we showed live units that have a, that you could you could see the breadcrumb. Now the strength of the GPS signal, of course, is is more accurate outdoors, but we do have a platform for indoors, um, so that you can uh, install um, devices to better um, determine those breadcrumbs indoors. So I think that's the kind of the next phase. There's a lot of juice to squeeze out of the lemon without GPS in the three points that I, we picked right here. We've got a lot of customers that are doing that. GPS is the next level. So um, we want to know where in the physical building did the impact occur. We're doing that now by shutting the device off, but I want to know where it happened so I can see, is there an area of my business that everything happens, right, that, that over time the impacts occur? Um, do we see certain, certain drivers going way out of their way? right to, to move unit today we accomplish that by showing you the time they spend moving versus lifting versus so we can show you that if we can dimension this an issue but we can't physically see it um, so we're beta testing our solution now um, we wanted to uh, since it is a software system and we all are experiencing software systems we wanted to give it to some of our key customers to kick the tires on it and make sure it's strong and hopefully not only do we issue the into the market with a strong solution, but we have customer testimonials as well. Okay, very good. Uh, you were talking about some of the different issues that, that could be notified, and Robert has a question, wanting to you know if they can just isolate collision only and separate that out from other things that are taking place. Just get certain alerts, I assume, so, from the question. Yeah, can you repeat that question? Uh, yeah, he's asking if, if you could just isolate the collision events only. Yeah, so, we think we can. So we have the horizontal versus vertical. So the vertical means something bumped into the truck or the truck bumped into that, right? Um, some, uh, so a lot of times when you're lifting heavy loads, you lower the forks too fast. That'll be, horse, uh, that'll be vertical. So that'll be separate, the potholes, the dock plates. Um, we want to be, be specific to the area of the truck that had that horizontal impact. Um, so when you see horizontal impact on your alert, on your dashboard, you can feel confident that, that that was a side, front, back, left collision with something. Okay. Makes sense. Um, you, uh, Gary is asking this question. You gave an example of initial equipment cost starting at $700. What kind of an ongoing monthly fee is there per forklift? Uh, and, and maybe including the cellular as well. Is, is, it, is that price based on your, your plan or the kind of trucks you have or how is that pricing done yeah. if you don't get if you can't get into specifics because it will it will vary so much i don't know yeah no so we have three different levels of telemax solution with three different price points for the monthly fee um uh, i know it's about a it's about a tenth of what i pay for my wife's cell phone today <laughs> for the level one so we, we love to we love to sit with that person and have a follow-up to share with you, but it, it's not comparable at all. If people think cellular, they're thinking fifty, sixty, seventy dollars a unit. We're nowhere near that. We're not it we're not even in that stratosphere. Okay. Another question has come in. This uh, viewer is saying while it's important to get automatic alerts, the real value comes from what reports or dashboards can offer. It should be easy to understand so we can make decisions. So the question is, what value, what valuable information can you get from the reports? Yeah, so, um, you know, what we find is, is, is that as, uh, you know, people are wowed by reports and dashboards, they often don't use them. Now, we don't use that as an excuse not to invest in our system. We have a strong dashboard, it's simple to use, it's very flexible and customizable in the report. So what I would use for reports is if I'm doing... Uh, a, a bit of a macro presentation of the status of my fleet, where they're doing, what are the issues, looking at it, doing a presentation. Uh, every one of our reports, we've got uh, lots of reports can be exported to Excel, and so you can have somebody put those into graphs and to share with that with the team. Here's what the benefit is. Here's what we're seeing as far as our utilization. Here's what we're seeing as far as our impact. Um, here's what we're seeing as far as our speed. Who's speeding? Who's not? Who's wearing their seatbelt? Who's, you know, who is a... Uh, uh, having these issues, um, and so if you want to look at several over a long period of time and see if you're really in, if you're really making a difference, log in, run those reports. We'd be happy to set them up. And once you set them up one time on our portal, they're saved and you can use them anytime. 
That's great. Uh, a couple of people are asking just how to get more information on this. So could you share uh, how they can contact their either their uh, should they contact Yale directly or their Yale dealer or what's the best process to find out more information and also to get specific pricing on the kind of uh, of uh, application that they might have. Yeah, we'd like you to uh, go to Yale.com uh, and there's a dealer locator application to locate your your dealer. Um, there's ways to reach out to us directly as well. Um, but we, we, we would really like you to use uh, your local dealer and uh, have them drive the solution. Right, and they're already working probably with those dealers anyway.